Okay. Today we are going to put the cylinder head back on top of the cylinders. The cylinder head, I assume you remember, is this horrible hunk of metal that you fought with the valves for a long time on. This is going to slide over the studs and down on top of here. Keep in mind that these exhaust studs right here, these face forward. We are going to have to make sure that we have the gasket here. We have to make sure that these dowels are here. We have to make sure that we don't have another set of dowels inside the cylinder head. We only need two. Sometimes they'll be stuck in here and you'll have four or three. We have to keep track of the cam chain. Um, and then we're gonna have to torque it down to a specific torque value. All of this is detailed on page 72 in your climber manual. I highly suggest you turn to that. And on page 72, it starts with cylinder head installation, clean old gasket material from cylinder head and cylinder mating surfaces and install a new gasket, coat the cylinder base with gasket cement. We are not coating the base with gasket cement. That is an unneeded step. And you should, this should, this surface, both of these surfaces should be pretty clean already. But one thing we do need to take care of is these two holes here are where the cylinder head bolts onto. And these two holes are notorious for being um, packed with filth and if there's too much garbage in there when we torque these little bolts down on here they break so we need to use the pipe brushes and put them into those holes and in and out twist it left and right uh, you can't do it too much So your pipe brushes are these guys, and you have different thicknesses. You always want to use the thickest one that you can get in there. I think this one's too much. No, maybe not. So it seems like if I turn it to the right, like I'm screwing it into the hole, I can get it to go down in there pretty far. Well, maybe not far enough. Maybe this thinner one is the key. Yeah, that goes in a lot easier. So twist it like you're screwing it into the hole and go until it won't go any further. Pull it out, tap off any uh, metal shavings or any dust in there. Go in and out of this thing without twisting it. Go in while twisting it the opposite way. Do what you gotta do. And you can see it's no longer a gold color here. It's got all this schmutz. You gotta do that on both. Good idea to twist it out that way it manages to grab whatever's in the thread and push it all the way out see if you can knock any loose pieces off so you're not putting something right back in
We need the gasket that goes on here. This is called the head gasket. This is the gasket that has uh, metal inside of it. It's not very flimsy. White, big white envelope of gaskets. This is the gasket to use. It's got the metal inside because this is where all the heat uh, comes from. So this gasket has to be really strong. And it can go either this way or it can go this way. It doesn't really matter, but it cannot go that way. And you'll know that you're putting it on right or wrong because it simply won't it won't go the wrong way but if you put it on the right way it fits over the tops of the studs drops down nice and easy get your chain situated fit the gasket over the dowels now i have found that it doesn't push down all the way got kind of a lump you know here don't worry about it once we get the cylinders uh, or um, once we get the cylinder head on here and torque it down this gets pushed flat smooth no problem okay so uh, Page 72, caution, be careful that you do not lose the dowels. Be sure to discard the old O-rings and replace them with the new ones or oil leakage will be sure to occur, occur, figure 79. So on figure 79, it's got a little arrow and it points to the dowel and it shows a little O-ring around this. I've never used that. It doesn't come with the gasket kits. I don't know what the deal is with that, but we're gonna ignore that. Step number two, unwrap a piece of wire from around the engine component that you have it attached to to keep the chain from falling down inside the engine. We don't have wire, we've got a screwdriver. Pull the chain up through the center slot in the cylinder head gasket and let it drape over the side of the engine. Set the cylinder head down over the cylinder head studs. Figure number 80. Pull the cam chain up through the head, figure 81. So it does make it easier if you have this magical piece of wire, but we don't. But if you look at the pictures on page 73, you can see why having this wire would be helpful. Uh, so if you watch how I do this, you, you'll see that you don't need the wire. What keeps moving in here? Oh, it's the washer. All right, so rest this on top. Remember, make sure that there are not dowels here. These, if there are dowels here, then make sure that they are not here. You can't have them in both places. They either need to both be on the cylinders or they need to both be on the cylinder head. The studs are gonna come through these holes. So I get it down this far and I can hold it with one hand anywhere. So as long as I can hold it with one hand, I can pull the screwdriver out and hold the chain with my other finger. Maybe I should do that from this side so you can see what I'm talking about. So I'm holding the cylinder head up with my right hand and I'm getting a finger into that chain and I pull the screwdriver out. And now I can reach in here. You know, this is um, ill prepared. I should have had a pick. Let's back.
back up a moment. Let's put the screwdriver back in here. Grab yourself a pick, the one that's got a 90 degree angle or a curved hook. That's what you're gonna need to grab that cam chain with. And in fact, you can do it right now. So it's resting on the screwdriver. I can reach down in there right now and grab the cam chain and pull it up with this pick. And then a second, I'm going to pull this screwdriver out and I'm going to put it through that cam chain. So lift up, hold the cylinder head up with one hand, pull the screwdriver out, put it back through here. And now, without pinching your fingers, you can lower the cylinder head onto the cylinders. And you need to make sure that where the dowels are, that's kind of your main focus here is, yes, getting this onto the dowels. That is on there. So if you take a look, you really shouldn't see any daylight around the area where the cylinder head is resting on top of the cylinders. Um, you now need to install and tighten the two cylinder head mounting bolts, figure 82, tighten to seven foot pounds. So there's two small bolts that ha actually also have washers. Should be in a bag and they, they go here next to the spark plug holes. The cylinder head bolts, they could be in a bag with spark plugs. They could be in a bag with the cam sprocket. Uh, nope, not in the bag with the cam sprocket. There are two bolts in there, but those are different. Okay, so mine were mine were in the bag that's labeled cylinder head. There's the spark plugs and there's two bolts here and the bolts still have the washers on them. If you do not have the washers, uh, if you do not have the washers, somehow let me know, but go through this step anyway. So these two bolts pretty small and it seems crazy to me that these two bolts are the only things holding the cylinder head under the cylinders where all the explosions are happening but no point in second guessing the Japanese engineers from back in the day because they were the best so you can tighten these by hand as much as you can and they shouldn't be fighting you very much. The one on the left side that I'm tightening now is going in okay. This one on the right side seems a bit tight. Something's going on here. I'm gonna take it out, put it back in, see if it makes a difference. Yeah, something's going on here. Try 
just switching it. Washers are kind of difficult to get out of that little spot. I'm going to leave the washers where they are. Switch the bolts. I'm going to try putting this one in first, see if it makes a difference. That's still not going in super easy. On this side, it's cooperating a little more. So that tells me that Maybe I didn't clean out the threads well enough on the cylinders. So I'm going to pull the cylinder head back off and I'm going to see if Those threads are still dirty. Let's see what's going on here. So leave the chain around the screwdriver. This is if you have to do this, if you have to take it back off. Wiggle this thing, lift it up, hold it up with one hand, and get your get a hand or a finger in that chain. Let the chain fall. Put the screwdriver through the chain, get the cylinder head off. So I'm going to see what's up here. It's going in easy, it's going in easy, it's going in ridiculously easy. So the hole is clean, but what's happening is the cylinder head is not lined up absolutely perfectly to this hole. So the bolt is going in at a weird little angle and it's making it really tough to get in there. So I need to definitely put this bolt in before I put this one in and I can try and shake the cylinder head around and get this thing to line up a little bit better. Screwdriver out, put the screwdriver in. And get the cylinder head back on over the dowels. I'm gonna take a look. It does look like it's slightly off center which is pretty lame because that's the job of the dowels to center things up. So I'm going to attempt to put this back in, gently turning it, because if I cross thread it, I'm really gonna mess things up. I'm gonna lift it up a little bit off the dowel, take the pressure off of the bolt. Sometimes it takes some wiggling for it to kind of find its home. Okay, I feel pretty confident that it's not cross-threaded. I'm still able to use my fingers to get it most of the way. That's a good sign. If you can use your fingers 
to get something, to get a bolt most of the way on, then you should feel confident that it's not cross-threading. Cross-threading is when the threads that it's going into and the, the threads of the bolt, they kind of go in at a weird angle and these threads will destroy the threads inside the hole and kind of re-thread it and the threads, instead of being all lined up nice and parallel, they start getting crossed and it ruins, it ruins everything. Cross-threading is a, is every mechanic's nightmare. Okay, the right side goes in nice and easy. Now I need my 10 millimeter socket and ratchet. Can't really use a wrench on this. And I'm going to go with the extension. Not a lot of room in here. So if I have the extension, and remember, turn it to the right. And I'm gonna tighten this up just a little. Remember, the book says we have to use a torque wrench to make it a certain tightness. So I just wanna get the, I'm gonna turn this really lightly. I'm holding the extension and I'm just using one finger to turn this thing around. And as soon as it begins to stop turning, I'm not gonna go any further. Yeah, getting tight about right here. That's about as tight as I'm going right now. I'm gonna do the same on this side. Starting to get tight already. Okay, right about there. Now we need to use the torque wrench. The torque wrench, I believe. You have this torque wrench. Uh, don't remember if we went over exactly how this works, but I can tell you that it is magic. I don't totally understand exactly how it works, but I don't think we've torqued anything on this yet, which is okay, good. So the torque wrench, I don't know if you have it in your toolbox or if it's in a cardboard box in your toolbox, but get this out. This measures how tight we are making a bolt. And we're only allowed to make certain bolts uh, a certain, a certain you know, tightness, for, what, for lack of a better word. It's hard to explain, but as we tighten the bolt, this red pointer is going to start moving towards some numbers. And we want it to go to a specific number and we don't want, to, we don't want that red pointer to go anywhere past that because then you've tightened it too much. So the book says these need to be tightened to seven foot pounds. Well, if you look at the units of measurement on this torque wrench, the silver area's numbers shows N-M, that's Newton meters, and the black area of the torque wrench, that unit of measurement is IN-LB for inch pounds. We need foot pounds. So do some quick math. Seven foot pounds is the same as how many inch pounds? Seven times 12 is 84. So we're going to turn this wrench on the bolt until this red pointer gets to about where we think 84 is. So we've got zero, we've got one mark, and then we've got 100. So we know that first mark is 50. So when the pointer gets to here, you are at the 50 mark. When you get halfway between 50 and 100, you're at 75. You wanna get just a tiny bit past that three quarter mark, 
there's actually no mark there. You know what, if you go to the 10 on the silver, the Newton meter, the, that little 10 right there, that's probably about 84. So why don't we just go for that? We're gonna tighten it until this red pointer gets to that 10 right there for Newton meters. And we're gonna say that that is 84 inch pounds, or 80, yeah, 84 inch pounds. So you put this on the bolt and I don't know if the camera's gonna be able to get it. But I'm turning this and the red pointer is starting to creep up towards the 10 and it is right there at 10. Done. Gonna do the same on this one. Starting here. This this even though it's called a torque wrench, it's more like a ratchet, except it doesn't have the ratcheting function. You can't go, it doesn't have that clicking function where you can, you know, you actually have to take it off and reset it if you go too far or you don't go far enough. Alright, so I'm going to start it here and start pulling this. Going, going, going. Okay, running out of room. I'm gonna reset, start over here. And right about there, it's at 10. Hopefully you can see that. Good. Those bolts are torqued to the proper torque spec. torque wrench for now. Uh, now we need to get the cam sprocket. And that is in the bag called cam sprocket. In this bag I have the sprocket I have two bolts and I have a really thin washer. Right now, we just want to get out the sprocket. Don't lose those bolts. Those two bolts are ridiculously important. Okay, your cam sprocket should look like mine, but it might be a little bit different. The important thing to note here is one side has an L and it has a flat line. So this one, sometimes this flat line will actually be the top of this black plastic and this, this top part will be gone. Either way, there's a, a line going across and there's an L. The L might be a little smaller on yours, but that's worth noting right now that you have an L on there. And the bottom of page 72 says the L on the sprocket faces the left-hand side of the engine. This is the left-hand side of the engine. Here's the L. We need to put it in the chain so the L is facing the left side. So. Lift that chain up and get the chain around the sprocket. Put the screwdriver back through it, let it hang. next step is we're going to put the cam base gasket on here or the cam box gasket and it's it's a weird one it's got 
all four of these shapes and this little guy in the middle. So find that gasket. This is the proper gasket. And if you take a look at this, it, the, the thing that determines which way it goes is this center slot here. The top is rounded, the bottom, the front is rounded, the back is squared off, and that matches this slot in the middle. Make sure you have your dowels. You have two dowels that should be in the rear of the cylinder head. So plop your gasket over the top here. Make sure you've got it matched up over the dowels. And now we're going to put the cam box or the cam base on top of this gasket. is this guy and same kind of thing look at the bottom this center slot here is rounded here and squared off here so you know exactly how it should go the front is rounded the back is squared front round back square dowels are in place if the dowels are stuck in your cam base that's fine just as long as you're not putting a dowel on top of a dowel so if you have your dowels here, then make sure that there are none here. Slide this over, grab the cam sprocket, snug this thing down on top of those dowels. Mine's not wanting to cooperate. Time for a little persuasion. The rubber mallet, tap this sucker on. four cam base screws. They're long and they're threaded all the way. You have a bag that has those four in it. Uh, mine was labeled cam box. Four long screws. Drop each one in. And grab your Phillips head screwdriver. And make them all just tight enough. Like just turn it until the head of the screw touches the cam box or the cam base and don't tighten it yet. Get all four of them to that point. And then you can make each one tight. Don't go crazy. Don't tighten them so much you end up stripping them. But they do need to be tight. Okay, now, uh, we're, now we're going to put the camshaft in. Uh, taking the camshaft out was an issue. You know, it, it, it's 
It's one of those puzzles. You got to twist, you got to turn, you got to move it back and forth. Uh, putting it in is 10 times harder. So take a deep breath. Get yourself mentally ready. This is your camshaft. And it goes in one way and only one way. And that is with the threaded part on the right side of the engine. And on the left side is the kind of the long nose. And it's got this little nub right here. That nub needs to be going through first. So even though step number eight says insert the camshaft, it really should be like the next three steps are going to tell you how to insert the camshaft. So it's, there's a specific way that this should happen. You need to have your 14 millimeter wrench and you are going to you have to do a couple things here. You actually need the weird looking alternator cover. It probably has a wire hanging out of it. This guy here. We don't need to bother using a gasket. We just want to slap this on. So the alternator cover, we're just going to put this on and just kind of tap it in place. We're not screwing anything in. We have it on here for one reason only, and that is because right here, See that little tiny mark in the dead center of that? That's called uh, an indexing mark. And we need to rotate the alternator until the, uh, there should be an LT mark. Is this the LT right here? Yeah. So see the LF and the LT? There's a line right next to the LT. We have to rotate the alternator in the direction of the arrow until that line right next to the LT matches up with this mark. So grab our 14 millimeter wrench and we rotate it. If you go past it and you need to go the opposite way of the arrow, that's fine. Okay, LT mark. And sometimes it's going to want to push itself past like that. You just got to figure it out. You might even have to hold it. But that mark has to be lined up. see it's already wanting to move by itself okay so not only does that LT mark have to be lined up with the index but the L mark on the cam sprocket needs to be pointing straight up I'm going to spin this around, and there it is. You can see the line going across there. And the L mark. Let me see if I can grab the flashlight and show you a better view. Okay, 
see there's the line, there's the L. We want that to L, that L to be paid like straight up at 12 o'clock. And you're gonna kind of have to hold that there as you push the cam shaft through. And that's gonna be the last thing that we do. Let's see if I can position this to get a decent view of this. Probably will not be able to. We'll have to depend on the overhead view for this. Okay. LT mark is where it needs to be. I'm going to hold this camshaft so that this nub is at 12 o'clock. And your nub might be on this part instead of this skinny part and it might be pointing out. Doesn't matter. As long as it's at 12 o'clock. So Pull the screwdriver out. Make sure that the L is pointing straight up. Take your camshaft with the nub at 12 o'clock and carefully feed it through. If you have to rotate it, Try and keep in mind that if you rotate it one way, you got to rotate it back. Try and keep that nub at 12 o'clock. And I just made this look way easier than it normally is. And I got the camshaft in. L is pointing up. Nub is pointing up. LT mark is essentially where it needs to be. Nub is up. L is up. LT mark where it needs to be. We're done. We're going to screw this in uh, next class. So this is where we're leaving it. That camshaft is all the way in. You can see right here that the camshaft is flush against the metal of the cam sprocket. The holes aren't lined up yet, but we'll take care of that next time. Okay, good luck. Let me know if you have any issues. Don't be afraid to email me. We can work it out.